Welcome to a quick discussion of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. This year is the 20th anniversary of the series, so I've been replaying the first game a bit, and I wanted to go over it and also talk about my history with the series and my hopes for the future of the franchise. To show off this game, we'll be jumping into two different episodes of the first game, starting with episode 1, the first turnabout. The Ace Attorney games are typically divided into two major sections, Investigations and Trials. Typically the first uh, episode of each game only has a trial to get you used to the uh, mechanics. Um, so we play as Phoenix Wright, a defense lawyer who in this, tr this trial is defending his best friend, Larry Butts, who has been accused of murder. Um, along with Phoenix's mentor, Mia Fey, uh, we have to basically go through a witness's testimonies to find contradictions uh, in order to ascertain who the real murderer was. Um, so the witness in this trial is Frank Saw It. Um, so basically, we just got a record of a blackout that will be very important for later. Oftentimes, we'll get new evidence as the trial um, continues, and we have to use everything at our disposal to slowly unravel the truth. Um, this is basically like a visual novel, but the interactive portion um, involves cross-examination of the witnesses' testimonies. Um, so Frank saw it, uh, has already testified once, uh, so we need to actually go through and figure out where he's lying, because he is lying. And um, this being the tutorial case of the first game, it's not that bad. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but basically, we need to go through the court record and all the evidence we have uh, to figure out um, a contradiction. And then as we find more contradictions, we'll get closer and closer to the truth. Um, in a cross-examination, we have two different options. In this case, we actually only need one of the options, which is presenting evidence. Uh, but in other trials, you will need to press statements. Um, so if we press the statement, uh, we'll get a little bit more information. A lot of times when you press a statement, uh, it won't be that relevant to a case. Um, sometimes it will be, and then uh, the witness will be asked to include it in their full testimony. Um, and then you can present something on that statement. I want to say in one of later, the later games, there's actually a case where you have to press a statement like twice in order to move the plot along. Um, but in general, once you press a statement, then you'll get a new statement, and that'll be the one that you want to present evidence on. Um, in this case, um, being the first cross-examination of the entire series, uh, we can simply jump ahead. Um, because Asaat claims that the murder happened at 1 p.m. when the autopsy report says the victim died at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. So that is a contradiction, we can call him out on it and move the case along. Um, typically, witnesses will keep trying to um, get out of trouble by continuing to lie. So as you present evidence to prove that they're lying, they'll typically testify a few more times and gradually uh, continue to lie, and you have to pick apart each lie every time. But yeah, this is the tutorial, so it's relatively straightforward, um, but kind of gives a good idea of how this works. Later games add in a ton of mechanics, uh, but the basic structure of pressing statements and cross-examination, and also presenting evidence, um, it's kind of the same in most of the games. Uh, even though the Phoenix Wright series is fairly beloved, um, I remember not really liking it when I first tried this game. Um, I got a little bit frustrated by one of the later cases, so I didn't actually play the second game, uh, or the third game, until much later. Uh, I saw a playthrough of the second game, and that got me to try the third game, which I liked a lot more. Um, I also picked up the 3DS trilogy, replayed the first game, enjoyed it a lot more, uh, and also played the other two games. Actually, I think I only played the second game, because I owned the DS version of uh, the third game, so I didn't actually replay that one. I, I haven't actually ever gone back to that game, um, so I'll probably do that, actually, uh, after I get through uh, the second game and the rest of this one, because I'm not quite done with my uh, playthrough of this yet. Um, so now he's claiming that he thinks the time was wrong because of a video playing. Um, but there's a bit of a problem with that, because right before this, we got a record of a blackout. Um, 
So there wouldn't have been a video playing because there was no power in the building. So this is another fairly straightforward um, um, cross-examination here. So uh, one thing that I actually kind of struggle with sometimes in Ace Attorney is there are a couple of statements like saying that there was a voice coming from the television and that the victim was watching a, a program. I kind of feel like sometimes there's problems of um, multiple statements potentially working for presenting evidence. Uh, so sometimes there's a little bit of trial and error and that's definitely why I kind of um, didn't enjoy this game originally. But yeah, I definitely like the series a lot more now. Um, I'm not sure if I'd say it's one of my favorite series overall, but I still really enjoy these games. Um, by the way, this is actually the most recent re-release of the game. These have been re-released quite a few times. Originally, uh, the first game was released for the Game Boy Advance in Japan only in October um, 2001. So uh, the series would not release internationally until the DS re-releases starting in 2005. Um, the DS version of this game is unique for also adding an additional case that has been included in every re-release since. Um, and I'm actually not a big fan of that case because the main uh, story arc actually ends at a really good point, so I feel like adding an additional case kind of um, isn't the best. Um, but that's kind of off topic a little bit. Um, I'll get back to that um, later on. Um, so yeah, that's the basic structure of how trials work. Um, he'll continue to testify and we have to keep picking apart his lies um, in order to help our friend. Uh, so I think I'm actually going to jump ahead to uh, a later episode, episode 4, which was the original final uh, episode of this game before the DS re-release, Turnabout Goodbyes. This is one of my favorite cases in the entire series, but it's also the last case technically, or second to last in most modern versions, so um, be aware there will be spoilers here. Um, so the second major gameplay type in the Ace Attorney series is Investigations. So in these, it's still basically a visual novel, but we can move around uh, to different areas in order to find evidence, meet witnesses, and gather clues. Um, and we can also examine things. So this is Phoenix's office, um, so we can just look around. Uh, this won't get us any clues, this is just for um, a little uh, fun dialogue, basically. Um, I definitely like the writing in Ace Attorney. A lot of times, uh, even when something isn't necessary to examine, it's just kind of fun to read through all the dialogue. Um, like, this is a reference to an earlier case. Um, but yeah, in general, the, the Ace Attorney series definitely um, thrive on their charm. Because the gameplay itself, being visual novels, isn't super um, exciting, I'd say. But it definitely has good characters and good writing. Um, the one thing I'm a little bit torn on is actually character design. Um, specifically in the uh, modern versions, they actually redid all of the character sprites to be uh, a lot cleaner. Um, being Game Boy Advance games originally, they're a lot uh, more pixelated originally. And some people do prefer the GBA and DS sprites. They find them a little bit more charming, and I actually kind of agree, um, but this isn't too bad. Um, also, we can present things to different witnesses or people around the world to get um, reactions. One of my favorite recurring jokes in the series is um, there is almost... I feel like there's like a couple times where you actually need to present the attorney's badge. It almost never does anything except gets a good response out of most people. Um, specifically, not so much in this game. A lot of times in this game, uh, if you try to present the uh, attorney's badge, they'll just kind of ignore you. Um, but in later games, you often get funny dialogue by doing so. Um, even though it's completely optional, it's just kind of fun. Um, so now we're at Gord Lake, which is the scene of the crime. Uh, we can go a few different places from here. Um, and this case takes place during Christmas, which is why we've jumped to this case, uh, because it's almost Christmas. Wowzers, this is Gord Lake. 
Um, so yeah, basically, we have nothing to do here except pick up one item, uh, because the actual character we need to talk to here isn't here yet. Um, but we do need something, uh, by examining, uh, uh, the environment, we can pick up these party poppers. And we can use these to, uh, make our way through an event later on, or activate an event later on. Um, so yeah, we, we have to take them, actually. Um, Amaya already took them. <laughs> Amaya's a cool character. She actually isn't in a lot of the games. She actually isn't in much of the second trilogy, um, which I think is kind of a bummer, because she is actually a, a fun character. Um, but they have really good characters in those games, too. Um, in this case, um, spoilers, we're actually defending the main prosecutor of the other cases, uh, Miles Edgeworth, who is actually... Um, got a, uh, a bit of a history with Phoenix, and is a very interesting character. Miles Edgeworth, and this is something that the Ace Attorney series does really well, um, a lot of the characters that start out kind of not super likable end up being really engaging by the end, and Miles Edgeworth is definitely a good example of that, where he goes from being very, um, cross, shall we say, to being genuinely a fan favorite character by the end of it. Uh, and he's actually, I think, in more games than Maya. Um, so next up, let's head over here. Um, so yeah, basically the investigation portion is just going around kind of in like a point and click style and just finding things that we can use to help um, our client. So, in this case, there are a lot of times where you'll kind of reach a dead end, uh, which is one of my big issues with the Ace Attorney series, is um, for both trials and investigations, there's often a very specific way of going about getting uh, the plot to move on. Um, the worst time for this was uh, the third game, Trials and Tribulations. Uh, in episode 2 of that game, there was a specific thing I kept missing on the ground, and I was basically examining things in the wrong order, and I was stuck on a section for like, I want to say like 10 to 20 minutes, just because I missed one small thing that would have moved everything along. Um, so yeah, in general, that is probably the most frustrating part of Ace Attorney, but beyond that, I still think they're pretty good games. Um, my other main complaint is sometimes these episodes can be very time-consuming. Um, specifically, uh, the last case in this game, the DS exclusive one, uh, DS onwards, I should say, uh, Rise from the Ashes, is very long. It's one of the longest cases in the series at this time. Um, and I'm not the biggest fan. That was definitely why I burnt out on the series and needed a break before getting back to uh, Justice for All and Trials and Tribulations. Uh, but when I eventually got to those games, I did really enjoy them. I also played every Ace Attorney game except the fourth game, Apollo Justice. Um, I heard not so good things about it, and, and it also was re-released really late on the 3DS. Um, it was originally released on the DS. It actually kind of has a lot more in common with Rise from the Ashes than it does the original trilogy. Um, Rise from the Ashes being a DS exclusive case, it was actually the last case released for the original trilogy, and actually draws a lot of mechanics from Apollo Justice, which I don't think had released at the time. So it was kind of like the game that bridges the original trilogy to the second trilogy. So it's still a cool case, I just feel like it goes on too long. Um, but yeah, I've never played Apollo Justice. I've seen a playthrough of it. It didn't look super appealing to me. Um, and it's generally regarded as one, one of the weaker Ace Attorney games. Um, also, one problem is, even though these games have been re-released quite a few times, uh, let's see, GBA originally, DS, uh, iOS, 3DS, um, and now Switch, uh, Steam, PS4, and Xbox One, um, a lot of these weren't given physical releases. Like, starting with the 3DS era, um, basically no Ace Attorney games were really released physically except for the Professor Layton crossover and the great Ace Attorney games earlier this year. Um, 
So yeah, a lot of them are digital only, sadly, in the West specifically. But a lot of them have English subtitles anyway. So if you import a copy, you can still actually play it in English. Uh, so if you want to collect the physical version, you can simply buy the Japanese version, though it'll be a lot more expensive than simply buying the um, digital version. Um, so yeah, Apollo Justice and the second um, Miles Edgeworth game, Miles Edgeworth Investigations 2, I think I actually got the title wrong, it's Ace Attorney Investigations Miles Edgeworth 2, or something like that. Um, but that one also was Japan only, um, so yeah, um, Investigations 2 and the Great Ace Attorney games were Japan only for the longest time. Uh, Investigations 2 does have a fan translation that I have yet to try, um, the Great Ace Attorney, um, yeah, it was only localized earlier this year, which was a big deal. Everyone was super pumped. It actually leaked, um, and people were so ecstatic because um, those games were released years ago on the 3DS and were held up for um, copyright reasons from what I gather. So them finally being re-released and actually getting a physical release for once, at least on Switch, not on PS4 sadly, um, was kind of a big deal. It gives me hope that someday we'll see more Ace Attorney games on current platforms. Um, specifically, I would love to see a remaster of the Edgeworth games. Um, I played the first game, a lot of people say the first game isn't as good as the second game. Um, but people say like Ace Attorney Investigations 2 is genuinely one of the best games in the entire franchise. So I hope that game gets localized someday in some capacity, um, whether it's like a remaster like this or just a port. Um, I'd be fine with either, to be honest, just to have the game officially released. Um, and I've also been playing The Great Ace Attorney on my own time, the first game. I got through the first trial, and yeah, that game also has the problem already of the cases being extraordinarily long. Um, but it's actually really good so far, even though it's set in the past, so you don't have any of the, the old characters. Um, you have, like, ancestors of the, the some of the main characters. Um, it's still engaging, um, and it's still very fun, but it also feels a little bit more slow-paced, like it's setting up a long-term arc rather than these games, which feel a little bit more self-contained. Like, there are easter eggs and references to older cases and games, um, but typically a game will have one story arc that basically ties all the cases together in a small way, but don't directly connect to each other. Um, so yeah, in general, I really do like the Ace Attorney series. Um, probably, they're probably some of my favorite visual novels, um, like of all time. Um, I really like the series and I hope it continues someday. Um, there have been rumors for a very long time about Ace Attorney 7. Um, and I'm not entirely sure how to feel about that. Um, the original trilogy ends on a really good note, and the second trilogy doesn't quite recapture the magic, but it, it does still end relatively well, I think, with Spirit of Justice. Um, but in general, I would be a little bit um, concerned about Ace Attorney 7 uh, being able to live up to the expectations and the hype of um, it being several years since the last game, and it honestly has pretty big shoes to fill. Um, but I hope it happens someday. It sounds like the great Ace Attorney actually did pretty well, um, so I hope it means that the series um, can continue someday. Uh, but with that being said, I think that's a about all I had to say about this. I do really recommend this. It's on everything now. Um, Great Ace Attorney is not on Xbox, sadly. And I do hope the second trilogy also gets re-released for modern consoles someday, just so I could play through like Apollo Justice and the other games in a better resolution than on 3DS. Um, yeah, it's definitely a very approachable series because this trilogy at least is on everything now. And I would highly recommend it because it's usually only like $30 at most and often goes on sale, so it's definitely, um, I definitely recommend this. Uh, but with that being said, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for another discussion.